have you ever felt frustrated when you're trying to arrange your track? So you have this beautiful eight bar long loop and then you just don't know what to do next. You try to arrange the track and you just not end up finishing the track. And then you feel even more discouraged because now you are doubting yourself if you are even able to make music in the first place. Been there, horrible experience. And in this video, I'm gonna share my top 10 favorite arrangement techniques that help me to finish tracks within four to six hours. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. And if you're interested in coaching and you want to take your music to the next level, sound like your favorite artist, have that commercial industry standard quality, I have a coaching program that will help you to get there uh, in 10 weeks. So if you're interested, uh, then just click the link down below. You can book a call with me or send me a message on Telegram. I have two spots left and I would love to work with you on your music and without further talking let's get straight into the video number one signature sounds and one of the biggest things that helps me to finish my tracks is having my own signature sound i'm going to show you some examples of the tracks so you can really hear how similar uh, my tracks are when you listen to them like face to face. So what is signature sound? It's simply about reusing the sounds that you like. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Say uh, we have two examples, right? Track one and track two. So I just changed like, I don't know, in, in this uh, case, just like one, two elements. You change a little bit, but you keep the core, like the uh, foundation, your favorite sounds, like the vibe that you use in your, in your music. So don't hesitate to start a new track in a finished project. Just reuse your favorite sounds, like it's a completely normal thing, right? And it's actually much harder to come up with something totally different, like every time. So like once I finish a track, I just copy the project and I start a new track with all of the sounds that I have. And then it's just so easy to arrange and finish the track. So uh, let's jump into uh, Ableton. And I'm gonna show you uh, two examples of uh, this concept. So we have, um, I think, yeah, two tracks. Uh, I would say this is like a deep tech, minimal, uh, dub techno kind of sound. So check it out. So this is the uh, one track. And this is another one. So they are different yet similar. So that's the whole thing. Reuse the sounds that you have, come up with your own library of sounds, your favorite presets, like your favorite techniques, and that's gonna help you like a lot, trust me. Like that's one of the best things that you can do for your own music. Okay, let's discuss the next thing, the track length. So there's a trend in Spotify and streaming services uh, that says that the tracks are getting shorter. So uh, why should you make shorter tracks? It's much easier to arrange and finish, say like, six and a half minutes versus uh, four and a half minutes or even less, it's like three and a half. Sometimes people call that extended mixes. So welcome to 2023, right? So shorter track, more streams, more money. And you can hook the listener from the first second. So one of the, again, like the most useful things that you can do when arranging the track, make it shorter. Like really four and a half minutes, like today is more than enough. You don't have to make it longer, like really. So uh, really easy thing to do. Uh, but yeah, like a lot of people just forget about that. So make sure you try it out. Okay. Now, uh, tip number three, start with long loops. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples in Ableton. So for me, starting with a uh, 16 bar loop is the easiest thing, but make sure that you start with at least like eight bar long loop, because otherwise, if you look at the picture, let's say if our loop is just five bars long, so to make 30 seconds, we would need to copy uh, our loop four times and that's gonna get like pretty repetitive, pretty boring. So mm, it's just not gonna sound really that good. But if you have like one loop, which is 30 seconds, let's say 16 bars, you just need to copy it like a couple of times to have two minutes, right? So four times for two minutes. And in total, you would need to copy it like eight times and we are not counting the breaks. So see how much more interesting that will sound. Right? So let's jump back into Ableton and I'm gonna show you uh, a loop that has very long melody. So uh, check it out. This is gonna be the loop. So pay attention to the melody, how long the melody is. <laughs>
you see how interesting, like how interesting the track sounds because the melody is really long. There's always like a constant movement. And this is one of the best things that you can do to make the process of arrangement much, much simpler, right? So make longer loops. It's uh, worth it's it's worth to sort of <laughs> struggle more, a little, like a little bit more in the beginning when you're making the loop rather than trying to make like five bars long loop more interesting, right? So again, why make longer loops? Much easier to arrange the track. It's not going to be repetitive. The sound will be way more interesting. And once you make 16 bars long loop, you need to copy it just eight times to have like four minutes. So see how easy that is. Okay, the next tip, how to make longer loops. Like really just use MIDI controllers, just play with your hands, freestyle the melody, then record uh, automation. And yeah, that's basically how you get your 16 bars uh, long loop. And then even if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can even use a computer keyboard. And I do it often and it works really well. And I'm gonna show you one example uh, of the second track. And I made this melody just by using computer keyboard. I didn't have any media controller, so check it out. And I didn't even use like any scales, right? So you can do uh, MIDI effects on Ableton. I just used my hands and my, my ears. So check the melody out. <laughs> Right. So uh, a quick disclaimer, you don't have to make like the whole melody 30 seconds long. You can make it eight bars long and then introduce a little bit of variation. But the most important thing, uh, just like in general, make longer loops. It will help you a lot. Now, the next thing, a viral arrangement structure blueprint. So for me, it's really easy to finish tracks because I do have a clear structure on how I'm arranging my tracks. I use this structure in every single track. I might tweak it a little bit, change it like here and there, but overall I'm using the same structure. So I'm going to break uh, down one of my tracks that I produced, and then we will reference that with the picture. But before we jump in into Ableton, let's take a look at the energy levels of the um, uh, arrangement structure. So as usual, we start with the intro. Intro like is really, uh, it's like it's really smooth. It's not like as uh, intensive, about 30 seconds. Then we have the build up, 30 seconds, then the drop, right? So we are going up in energy. Once we have the bridge, mm, we start to go down. So we do, we have the bridge, then we go to the break. Uh, again, like we'll go down and then we go up again. So it's up, down, up, down, up, down. And this is like a three out the whole track. This is the thing with, with the arrangement. So again, don't look at the numbers like as a rule. This is just something uh, that you can use as a reference. I don't say that the drop cannot be like one minute, one and a half minutes. As long as it is interesting, it's totally okay to have longer drops, longer bridges, longer, longer intros. The most important thing that you understand is like the overall structure. So let's jump back into Ableton and I'm gonna show you those um, uh, different parts of the track. So uh, we're gonna start with the intro here. Uh, this is the intro. So this is just the beat, right? Now the next thing, this is sort of the next step of the intro. So here we are adding energy. We, we, we are going from the intro, like really, really up, right? This is more like a build now. I would say like this part is like the, the classic build. And 
And now we have the drop. So the drop is the most intensive part of the track, right? So uh, the red, red one, red color. I, I just picked that, okay? So this is the main drop where we have the most energy. And then we transition uh, from the drop to the next part, which is a little bit more, um, like less intensive. It has a bit less energy. So here we go down and uh, you can choose to have the drop like this long, it's okay. Or you can choose to have like the most intensive part as I have and then go a little bit down because the, the, the energy level is um, not as high, right? It's a little bit like less energetic, but still not like as smooth, like as slow, it's like as weak as for example, the grip, like this. Right, and then we transition. Also, pay attention how I'm using melodic fills, like the transitions at the end of those like uh, parts of the of the track. Right, so this is sort of the simple blueprint that you can use. And then uh, we have the breakdown. And then I'm just simply copying the same structure, the same sound, so the, the second drop is exactly the same. Again, now, comes the next part, so this is like the chill part. Now I'm introducing the Reese bass or the pad bass. And now we have the build up. Really as simple as that. And here it just follows the same structure that we had for the um, previous part of the track. So I'm just simply copying the same structure. So uh, let's reference the picture once again. So you have the intro, the build, the drop, bridge, then the break, build, drop, bridge, outro. So take a look at the intensity, at the arrows, and that's sort of the approach that you can use. So you can copy that and then just uh, tweak that and make it work for your own music. So. That's the whole thing, okay? So the next step, let's talk about the next one. Oh, no, actually, wait. So why should you use arrangement templates? Uh, for me, I know that this structure works for my music. I don't need to overthink, just like plug and play. And you can streamline the arrangement process. So once you have the structure, like a step-by-step -step system that you use, it becomes like so, so easy to finish tracks. And I, I just copy that, like literally, I just copy that, I change that like a little bit, but the process is pretty much the same. So that's sort of the same thing. Okay, so bonus tips. Uh, use my structure as a starting point. You can change it depending on the context of the track and always analyze the arrangement in successful commercial tracks. We'll talk about that in this tutorial and just refine your custom arrangement template with time and experience because it will change over time. It will evolve over time. Now, the rule of three and micro effects. So uh, this is a really interesting concept. Uh, say we have the melody, which is, I don't know, like four bars long. So if we keep repeating the same thing, it's gonna be boring. But if we repeat, uh, like, no, if we change a tiny bit, the melody, the effect, something, we have a change every four reps, then it will not be as boring. It will be like much, much better. So it doesn't have to be very complicated. Just introduce a bit of variation at the fourth rep. So to show you what I'm talking about, uh, here's uh, this example. So we have like a super basic beat here. Let's do like this. And a cheesy melody, but you'll get, you'll get the idea, right? So uh, let's play the melody. So you can see like this is, uh, let's say that this is one repetition, right? One, two, three. And then it would be boring if we would have had the same like melody over here. So I have two variations at the end of the loop. So once you have that,
right? So yeah, the melody is a little bit cheesy, but it's just really, really easy to illustrate the concept. Then again, I can show you uh, exactly the same concept in uh, the previous track that we used. So this is pretty much this part. So pay attention to how the melody changes and you will understand how to use that in your own track. <laughs> Right, so he wants to introduce uh, little variations in the melody, in the effects, and so on, right? So, the next thing uh, in, inside this tip is micro effects. So let's use the classic noise sweep as an example. This is classic and obvious, right? So we all use noise sweeps, that, that's a normal thing. Uh, as opposed to that, micro effects are short little sounds that fill up empty space in the arrangement. Uh, we would call that normally like ear candy. I call it micro effects, whatever name you prefer. Essentially, it is the same thing. So to show you what exactly um, uh, that is, I'm gonna show you this track. So pay attention to those two sounds, right? So those are micro effects and pay attention to how they add something to the track. They make it more interesting. This is also micro effects, right? So this is essentially what micro effects are. So what you want to do to add more variation to your music is one of the things is work on the melody, add some variation. It could be even like automation, but something should change. You cannot have repetitive sounds because it will be boring. Like when I'm listening to my tracks that are repetitive, like I just get bored pretty, pretty quickly. I think there was one more example for the micro effects or maybe something else. Yeah, pay attention to the uh, Reese bass here. So the melody is the same, but I'm introducing something on top, right? So this is essentially what this technique is about. So micro variations, micro effects, and those little nuances, they make a dramatic difference in your music. So make sure you use that too. Okay, the next thing, um, how do you use micro effects? So use that, uh, use uh, to spice up the arrangement. So having too many noise sweeps can be boring and amateur, so combine amateur combine both. You use when you have little empty spaces in your arrangement, so exactly as I've shown you in two previous examples. You use to accentuate, accentuate certain parts of the track and just freestyle and see what works. Because at the end of the day, it's just like really about freestyling and understanding what you like. The next tip. Automation and movement. So uh, automation is the key to pro sounding tracks. You want to have constant movement uh, in your tracks. Otherwise it will sound boring and repetitive. And this is something that took me quite some time to master uh, because I didn't automate a lot. So I was just skipping that basically, right? So what you want to have is a constant movement like throughout the time, right? So this is really good because we have movement. And this is very boring because we don't have any movement, right? So let me give you, uh, again, one uh, cheesy example, but it's gonna illustrate the concept really, really well. So let's see, we have this uh, cheesy lead sound. Uh, let me turn off all the effects. And then we're just gonna play with the filter, just the filter, and then you're gonna see how it can change the track. Supply a bit of delay and reverb. Just with the filter automation, it already creates so much more movement and life in the track. And then we have so many things that we can automate. So let me show you uh, a couple of ideas of what you can automate in the synth. So, uh, how to use automation. So use that for the contrast. For example, open a filter during the climax of the track. I'll show you that. Uh, micro automation changes keep the track interesting. So you can automate just like a tiny bit. It's not gonna be like very obvious, but you do that throughout the whole track. So even if the track is repetitive, 
then you will have that micro variation. And then you can do a lot of things like automating volume for more dynamics, like really, let's see if you have the lead sound, the vocal, you go from like the low volume and then you go up to really like bring it up front. That's like one of the things that you can do. So what you can automate really, for example, if you're using Seaboom, you can automate the amount of unison and detune, a wave table, form, like position, envelope, LFO shape and length, uh, warping modes, filter resonance and cutoff. So let me show you a couple of those things. So one of the things I've already shown you, so could be, then we can automate the envelope. Let me show you. And then we can automate different warping modes. Uh, this one doesn't change that much, I think. We can automate the resonance as well. And then again, the, the filter envelope and so on. So by using those uh, automations, you can emphasize specific parts of the track. You can bring more life, you can bring more movement. So for example, one of the most basic things that I would do, if I would need to automate something, then I would automate the envelope length, the filter to like during the climax of the track, the most intensive part. So I would uh, maybe start with a close filter. And then I would automate that. So uh, let me give you one example of the track. I think I had it somewhere, uh, somewhere here or not. Yeah, I think. Right, so pay attention to the lead sound. It's pretty close. And here it opens, but just, just because we had sort of a more dark lead, dark um, variation here, the energy is like, it's so nice. We have so much more movement in the track and it can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be like overcomplicated, but it, it can be like really as simple as that. So just experiment with that. It's uh, really not as complicated. Uh, the next thing that you can automate is the effects. So in serum distortion, phaser, flange, chorus, delay, you can automate like any parameters to be creative. And I want to show you this one thing. Let's say we have a serum and then we're going to play a little bit with the effects So distortion, flange, phaser, chorus, let's say delay, right? So I'm going to uh, automate these and then show you. Let's say we can automate the drive. And you can do like so many weird sounds with with uh, with that. So just play around. Like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And again, like automation doesn't have to be like very very complicated. Okay, the next thing, pauses. So this is one of my favorite favorite techniques. And pauses can take you mixes from predictable to exciting and captivating sounds. Let's uh, take a look at this example. So we have the build up and then we have the drop. And just because you introduce the pause between the build up and the drop. This will be really unexpected. This will be surprised. Uh, the listener will be surprised. It can create a dramatic effect in the track. But again, it's not always needed, but when you can use it, it can really take your tracks to the next level. And I'm gonna show you two examples of that. Uh, and oftentimes this can sound boring. 
So again, test it out. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes uh, it will be okay to not to have any pauses. So consider using more pauses in your tracks. Again, let's jump back into Ableton and I'm going to show you two tracks. Uh, it's going to be this one. So we're going to start with the uh, uh, build up. Listen to the build up and pay attention to the pause and how it affects the track. <laughs> Right, so it's so good. I just love this moment, right? It, it gives you a little bit of that like space. I think it's just one second or something like that, but it uh, creates such a good dynamics in the track. Like it just makes it so nice. Like the drop will hit much harder when you have the pause because I'm like, oh, and then, and the same thing goes for the second track. Right, so again, same thing, uh, and it does so much good stuff to the track, so make sure you try it out. So uh, how do you use pauses? So you can use pauses to emphasize certain parts of the track. It can be like even somewhere in the drop or uh, in the little transition to the like next, uh, let's say after eight bars or 16 bars, right? So the next uh, eight bars, you can make a little pause here. You can surprise the listener with the pauses and it can create a really nice and unexpected effect in the mix. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, and this is something that would help you a lot, is understanding uh, the difference between melodic and atmospheric tracks. So we have, I would say, two types of music, really. Atmospheric tracks, so it's more about the feel and the vibe rather than the melodies. Often, uh, it doesn't have the lead melody. It might have some melodic elements, but they don't uh, have the role of the main elements in the track. So it's more focused on the chords, atmospheres, sometimes micro melodies. And as opposed to that, we have melodic tracks, like with main elements, vocals, melodies, chords, whatever. So it's always built around central element, vocal, melody, and so on focuses a lot on harmony and melody and atmospheres play the second role. So it's not really about the vibe, it's like about the melody. So let me show you uh, a couple of examples. So these two tracks, these are good examples of atmospheric tracks. They don't have mean melody, it's more about the vibe. And same goes for the second track. But on the other hand, we have another example, which is going to be this track. So it's more focused on the melody, but I do have the first part of the track before the breakdown and the second drop where uh, I have more atmospheric vibes. So you can combine that. If you can do it in a nice way, the track is going to be really interesting. So you can use the second drop as the climax. And I usually do that. The first drop is not really energetic. And the second one is like where I have the most of my elements, right? <laughs> Right, so this part is a little bit more about the atmosphere. So it's something that you can try for your own tracks, right? So understanding the difference is crucial because otherwise you might be making atmospheric track and then you would like to add the melody and then you will be confused, like why doesn't it work? And the reason is really simple, just because the type of the track that you're making is more like about the atmosphere rather than the melodic vibe, right? Not all tracks need melody. This is something, again, not all tracks need melody. You can get away just with the atmosphere, just with some motifs, not like the lead melody. So as, as I see here, often motif is enough. 
Uh, decide what kind of track you want to go for and it will be just much easier because if you understand okay i'm going for the melodic vibe then it's cool but if you have like the atmospheric track and you try to come up with the melody uh, it might not work that well and you can combine both uh these concepts in different parts of the track so again uh, drop one atmospheres drop two melody focus so try it out minimalism the next thing like one of the uh my favorite concepts in music and this is also one of the hardest concepts uh to master for sure but once you do it production becomes almost effortless so it's always easier to fit in a fewer elements you have a limited amount of space in the mix just imagine that the mix is like a box and you can put a limited amount of elements in that box and if you try to overcomplicate it this is this is what, what's going to happen so it, it's just going to get like messy it will be muddy the track will feel muffled and so on so even if the sounds are good main elements might get lost in these sounds so it's always easier to make things simple so i'm going to give you a minimalism formula I always try to have sort of this structure in my track. So once you have these elements, you can start arranging. So listen, all you need to start arranging the track is going to be the bass line, melody, drums, uh, chords. I think here I wanted to put like FX, FX and atmospheres, something like that. So bass, melody, drums, chords, uh, FX, atmospheres and vocals. And vocals you, you don't need to have, but it's really nice to have. Uh, and you really don't need more than that. So once you have the main elements, just start arranging the whole track horizontally. You don't need to put more sounds into the into the arrangement. Just stretch it out. It will be really, really easy. And again, you don't always need to layer your sounds. It's often okay to have just like one lead sound, one bass sound, one chord sound. If you have good sounds, it's going to sound good. So focus on the songwriting process. This is so, so important. So... Uh, let me uh, let me show you uh, a couple of examples of minimalism. So I do have uh, three tracks. The first track has less than like 30 channels, but it sounds so full. It sounds really good. So check it out. Check out the drop and the uh, uh, breakdown. Uh, let me show you the drop like with uh, all of the sounds like really this track has less than 30 channels but it sounds so full and this is all about the simplicity the minimalism once you have the sounds that you need, then you don't have to do anything extra. Again, keep things simple. I'm going to show you another example. This is also like a really nice deep house, uh, minimal kind of track with really beautiful atmospheres. And again, like this track doesn't have a lot of sounds playing at the same time. Again, super simple. And I'm going to show you another example. So this is going to be uh, this track. So I'm utilizing the free space in the mix uh, for the reverb and to really um, give this space to my elements to give them enough space and again like even the drop like the main drop is still pretty simple oh wait i think it's yeah this was the main drop Even though it's simple, it sounds complicated. So this is like the 
beauty about the minimalism. So once you master that, the production process will be really, really simple. So follow that formula. And yeah, we have just a couple of tips left. So one of my favorite techniques, and this is something that I talked uh, about in the beginning of the video, the notepad, notepad technique. This is the best technique that will help you to finish your track, like finally. Once I get a part of the track done, it could be the full arrangement, maybe like 16 bars long loop, but usually it should be more or less like finished track. Uh, once I get the part of the track done, here's what I do. I listen the whole track and I make notes. Let's say bar 23, drums, uh, put a filter uh, before the break, pause before the break, 29, uh, brass, sound, long head, uh, 49, more energy, uh, and, and, and so on. So once you listen throughout the whole track, you have a list of notes that you can use to change the track. And even if you feel stuck, you will still have ideas of what you can do to the track. And this is why this approach is really, really useful. So you can take a piece of a paper uh, or you can do the same thing on your computer, on the phone. But the most important thing is that you write down the changes and uh, like of the things that you want to uh, improve change. And then you repeat the process until there's nothing to change. And trust me, if you even if you feel like, like I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, you will still have some ideas uh, if you use this technique. So make sure you use that. So again, this technique will show you specific steps you need to take to finish the track. I really recommend not looking at the DAW uh, while you do that. Just focus on the ears. And this is something that I picked up from uh, experienced guys. When you close the eyes and you focus more on, on the ears and what you hear, you will not like get caught by the things happening on your screen. It's a really useful thing. So even if you feel stuck, when you write things down, you want to do, uh, you want to uh, improve or tweak, it will help you to overcome the writer's block. A, a lot of the people struggle with that, right? It will also help you to not to get tired of the track. Listen less and do more. So once you give it like a listen, then you don't have to listen again before you finish with the tweaks, right? So that also helps a lot to not like get tired with the track. Like I struggle with that sometimes too. Now, the next tip the almost the last one. So we, we just have one left. Copying and analyzing reference tracks. So this is one of the fastest way to learn arrangement um, when you when you copy. So as you see in the picture, try this exercise. Stick reference track and try to guess all of the sounds that you use. For example, you can see when the lead kicks in, right? Repeat with all of the sounds. I'm gonna show you in Ableton. Then you will see how the structure they structure the track and why it works on the dance floor. This is really important to understand how they structure the track, why it works on the dance floor and so on. And once you master this, you can come up with your own signature way of uh, arranging your music. So I'm um, referencing one of the previous uh, tips that I gave you, right? So let me show you. And yeah, so let's say we have uh, this track. I'm gonna play that a little bit for you. Right, so I didn't copy like exactly how it was in the reference track. It's more like about the structure. So once you hear, okay, here we have the baseline, uh, here we have the lead sound, chords, uh, chords and so on. Maybe we, we just have like a lead sound this long, maybe it's this long, maybe it plays together with, with the chords pads and so on. Maybe we don't have any drums and so on. Uh, wait, uh, maybe don't, we don't have any drums and so on. So really depends, right? What you want to do is literally try to copy all of the sounds, put that as MIDI, and then you will be able what you will be able to see what they use in the tracks. And that's like super, super helpful. Like it will help you a lot to understand. And then you can just copy the same arrangement or maybe like start a new track based on what you just done, right? So super useful and it helps you to understand the structure. And then the last thing that we have for today, uh, intuition, trial and error. A lot of things that I learned in music came from trial and error. Like I'm not perfect. I still sometimes make a lot of mistakes, but the more you do and the more I've done things, the easier it became for me to produce music. Sometimes you just get an idea, you test it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's applicable to music, to sound design, anything in the music production uh, process, right? So test things out, like give yourself creative freedom. I did a lot of that. And that's why it's easy for me to make music. And the last thing for today, listen to a lot of music, produce and trust your intuition. The more you do it, 
the better you will get at it. So yeah, that was it. A bit longer tutorial than I expected that I usually do for my channel between like 20 minutes, but I tried to share like all of good tips that I know, something that was super helpful for me. So I'm sure, and I can guarantee if you apply these concepts, that will help you a lot with your music. It will really improve the sound, the quality, and it will help you to get closer to that professional sound. So uh, if you liked the video, then don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. And I see you guys in the next one.